Well, there is a major breaking story right now. The U.S. reaching a plea deal with some of the accused plotters of the 9-11 attacks on America over two decades ago. Let's bring in CNN Pentagon correspondent Oren Lieberman. Uh, this is quite a surprise, Oren, right? A major announcement coming from the Defense Department. We have known for some time now that they were working on the possibility of a plea deal with the alleged mastermind of the 9-11 attacks, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, more commonly known as KSM. But to see that announcement is still a major moment here. Uh, KSM uh, has been charged or was charged back in 2008 with a number of different charges related to his alleged involvement in the 9-11 attacks, including uh, conspiracy, murder and violation of the law of war, attacking civilians, attacking civilian objects, and much more. Now, DOD doesn't give the details of the plea agreement itself, but according to the New York Times, he and two of his co-defendants have agreed to plead guilty to conspiracy charges and serve a life sentence instead of the death penalty that the U.S. had been pursuing. Now, this process has been years in the making. KSM was captured in Pakistan back in 2003. He was arraigned in 2008, but the process from there dragged out and moved very slowly. His long-delayed trial was set to begin. There were several pretrial hearings over the course of the past couple of years, and then the news back two years ago that the U.S. was considering the possibility of a plea deal here for a guilty plea from KSM. DOD, again, not announcing that guilty plea, but coming from uh, New York Times reporting that he has agreed to plead guilty uh, with several others. A key question here, Pam, where does he serve out that life sentence? Because for years now, the Biden administration has been trying to close Gitmo. Yeah, I mean, that's where he's been. So that is a key question. Oren, thank you. Let's talk about all of this uh, with CNN national security analyst Peter Bergen and CNN senior legal analyst Ellie Honig. Peter, I want to start with you. I mean, you are an expert on al-Qaeda and counterterrorism. How significant is this? Put this into context for us. Well, Ellie can correct me, but I think it's pretty unusual for somebody to be captured in 2003 and only plead guilty you know, so many years later. I mean, this trial, everything that could go wrong with this trial did go wrong. KSM was waterboarded 183 times. Uh, he was subjected to various other forms of coercive interrogation. That greatly clouded the case against him. Um, you know, the fact that, that, you know, we were still in pre-trial hearings, uh, you know, more than two decades after he was captured, I think speaks for itself. So this plea deal is sort of probably the least bad thing that, uh, you know, the least bad case for the prosecution. Some of the families, I'm sure, wanted the death penalty. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, plea deals happen. And the side, KSM side, I think they were very concerned about being put in supermax, which is sort of like being buried alive. The, for, in Florence, Colorado, in fact, KSM's nephew, Ramsey Youssef, who bombed the Trade Center in 93, is there. Uh, and we still don't, as Lauren said, we don't know the details of what the uh, life sentence incarceration will be. But it seems from New York Times reporting that they are very keen not to have solitary confinement. Uh, this is the photograph of, of KSM when he was arrested. The CIA released it. It was a very unflattering picture, intentionally so. Uh, but that was back in 2003 in Pakistan. So it's been a very long time coming. Hopefully this will provide some measure of justice to the families and the victims. Yeah, and, and Ali, I want to get your perspective on this. Like Peter just said, this was 2003. He was captured. Now it's 2024. How common is it for prosecutors to reach a type of plea deal uh, with a terrorist like this and with this many years that have lapsed, too? Well, Pam, this is one of the most difficult decisions that any prosecutor ever has to make. Do you take a plea deal in a murder case, especially a case where capital punishment could be a remedy, and especially in a case like this where Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is one of the most serious villains in United States history. He's responsible for the death of mm -hmm. nearly 3,000 people. That's what he's charged with. Now, from the prosecutor's perspective, the benefit of a deal like this, number one is you get certainty. You lock in a conviction. You ensure that KSM, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, and the two other individuals here will spend the rest of their life behind bars. You spare yourself the need, the resources, perhaps the uncertainty of a trial, but there's also risk and downside involved. On the one hand, is it true justice to allow somebody who was responsible for the deaths of thousands of Americans to avoid the death penalty himself? And second of all, I anticipate that the victims here, the surviving family members of the people who were killed, I imagine there's going to be some resistance, some rejection, some pushback on this. Ultimately though, it is the prosecutor's call and the prosecutor will have to face judgment from the families for this decision.
All right, Ali Honig, Peter Bergen, thank you.